In a previous video, I modeled a Last of Us wall lamp, and I want to do this floor lamp now because I, I find this is an interesting a lamp shade. I'm going to put those together in some kind of a little mini scene. So I want to do this lamp now. So I've got this reference image, and I'll provide a link for you to download it if you want to model along with me. All right, so I brought it in and I've scaled it. I think I went S2 or S3, and I've set it up with my 3D cursor right about here. So I'll show you how we're gonna go about doing this. Okay, in front orthographic view, I'm going to bring in a circle, and it's going to be 12 vertices. I'm going to edit mode and scale it up. I know it's a little bit hard to see against this colored background. So I've got my circle there, and now I'm gonna select every other vertex starting with the one at the front and now I'm going to pull down so pull down as much as you really want to select it all and you can see that it's it it goes down here and there now before I do anything else I want to duplicate that pull it down below so there you can see it and P break it out and I'm just going to leave that I'm going to come back to this one here, go into edit mode, and now I'm going to shift control B and pull like this. And I want three vertices. I'm going to pull out about that much there. Okay. Select it and shift D to duplicate it and pull it up to the top. I'm going to scale it down and then I'm going to rotate X 180 degrees and just position it roughly there, scale it a bit. I'm going to select both of those and Control E bridge edge loops so I get this. A little bit off the reference image but that's okay. Control R to drop an edge loop in the middle and scale it in a little bit so that it tapers like that. Now control B with three edges in there and pull it like that. So it's more of a gradual, gradual thing. With that then I'm gonna go into edge selection and it might be easier if I hide that and select every middle one that is on the curve going up so shift and alt and click that middle one shifty e and pull until it turns pink for edge crease and that'll sharpen that up a little bit now we can go ahead and do control one or control two and shade smooth and you'll see what we're getting i'm going to select it all now and I want to give it a little bit of thickness. I'm going to use E and Alt S and I'm going to pull. I want it to come in. And don't give it too much. Just like that. Now, Control R, pull an edge loop down. We're going to create the lip. So look at this distance here. I'm going to drop an edge loop right there. Control B, I want just two. And I want to get sort of a similar, a similar thing. This doesn't matter if it's not perfect. And another one up here. And I'm going to start with that. Three for face selection. Shift Alt and click that one, that one, and that one. Turn so you can sort of see the side. E and Alt S and pull, whichever way makes it come out. And try that. Okay. Now I'm going to drop an edge loop down here and up here, not too tight though. And we may bevel that a little bit as well. And up here. So this is what we're getting. And I think we need to have them a little sharper. So I'm gonna put another edge loop and see what that does. Nah, it's not quite enough. So GG to move it up. We do one there and one there. I don't want them too, too harsh, So, but I don't want it quite this rounded. So I'm going to drop one in, pull it up near the top and near the bottom, but just that much. 
near the top and near the bottom. Okay. Let's take this and alt in, recalculate outside. Notice there was a change in color, some of the polys were flipped. So that's the shade itself. Now we'll come back to this piece. I'm going to take this, I'm going to pull it up a little closer. It still closely matches that, but there's no subdivision on. I'm going to press 1 for vertex selection. With it all selected, I'm going to right click, choose subdivide, and I'm going to subdivide this maybe two times. This is going to create those tassels. I think that's probably okay. All right, now what I'm going to do, position this up around there, E to extrude and pull down like that to get the starting length of those. Press 3 for face selection, Shift Alt and click X only faces. Don't do faces, only faces. And then in edge selection, select one of these, choose select similar direction. That'll select all of these, and I want to get rid of everything else. So go Control I, X, edges, and now I have just these. We'll position them in a moment. Let's go back to object mode, but let's convert these to a curve. Come to the curve dialog box and increase the bevel depth just a little bit, not too much. Pull these up. So let's just have a look at these here. All right, what I want to do is go in, these are all curves, and go Scale, Shift, Z, and find which way pulls them just underneath this thing here. So I'm going to Scale, Shift, Z again, and pull them out. So it looks like they're coming out of this piece here. Now, some of them may be a little bit long. That's okay. We're going to go in here and select that one and that one. That one. It's the ones uh, where it goes up. Those ones are the ones that are a little bit long. And then we can move them all down if we have to. That one and that one. All right, just pull these down a little bit. Okay, that's not bad to start with. All right. Uh, we're going to need to decide on a thickness. I might bring this down by one. We'll have that. Yeah. Okay. So here's what I got figured out. Let's go into edit mode and wireframe because some are in behind the others. I'm going to press C and I want to paint select just these bottom ones like that. Escape. At this point, you can bring them up if you want them a little bit shorter. Now, don't lose your selection. I'm going to go back into solid view. Here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to press E to extrude, come down a little bit, and then Alt-S, and I'm going to pull. And that's going to widen them out. Alt-S again if you want it wider, like that. Keeping the selection, E to extrude, pull down a little bit. And then E to extrude again, pull down a little bit more, maybe even equal to that distance there. Doesn't have to be exact. Alt S and pull in to make them smaller. Now I'm going to extrude out again, and I wouldn't mind it being similar to this. Alt S, but it doesn't really matter. You can try it. And if it's too much, just go back and Alt S. That's okay, even though there's a little taper, I can make that uh, smaller. I'm gonna go with that. E to extrude, pull down a little bit, all tests and pull out a similar distance, a smaller distance, a bigger distance. It's up to you to use your artistic design. Down a little bit, and then one more. One more down here. Alt S, I'm going to pull that in quite a bit. And I'm going to pull it up a bit like that. So we have this. I'm going to convert that to a mesh in a moment, but I'm going to change the resolution down here where under the bevel part to two. That's going to lower the number of polys. And I'm also going to come up here, change this one to three. And then I'm going to convert to mesh. I can shade smooth and it may look a little bubbly but you're not going to see it up close anyhow so I'm probably fine with that 
Okay, so we have the tassels coming off. At this point, I'm gonna look at this and I've got one subdivision and I think I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And I'm gonna take these and those and I'm gonna join them together. Okay, so my 3D cursor is still right in the middle. I'm gonna do this part, Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder. I will use a cylinder with 16 and nothing. And I'm just going to edit mode and scale it down until I get the diameter I want. And I'm going to bring it down to about there where that piece starts. And I'll shift and control that. What did I do? Yeah, whatever it is to select the whole edge. I'm just going to pull that under. And shift and alt is what it is. E and S and pull out. E to extrude down. E and S to come in. And now you're just doing this. E and S to come in a bit. E, pull down. E and S to come out. E and down. E and S will come in a little bit. E will come down to here. E down to about there where the where the straight line ends and scale it out. E come down to about there. E and S come into here. And then we're going to extrude down. And at that point the diagram ends and you can see this stuff here. So I'm going to suggest that you just do what you want or you could take this if you want and you could drag it over and scale it down and keep manipulating it until you get the approximate size. And then just think, okay, I think I want it. How long do I want it? Maybe about there. Let's try that. Let's come back up here, pull those down to there. That'll look okay. I think maybe it might be. All right. Back to it. E and S will come out to here. E and down. E and S and come in. And for this, we'll just come straight down and then we'll bend it in in a bit. Come to there, E and S. What we'll do is we'll come out to about the diameter of this, E and come down and we'll, we'll bevel it. That's close enough, E and S, come out, E and come down. Okay, now we'll select that edge. I'll go into wireframe, Control B to bevel. Pull it down like this and roll your mouse up. And I feel like that. We'll probably put a subdivision on this. Uh, I said we were going to bend this in, so let's look in wireframe, scale that in like that, and then Control B and have maybe th just three. Give it a nice area like that. All right, let's take that Alt and recalculate outside. Now we'll bevel. Shift Alt and click that edge and Control B. I'm going to have three. I'm going to do this one as well with three. And I'm going to come up to here. I could do this one and this one together. And we'll just do three like that. Just a small one for support. We'll do those two. Just do them as much as you want. Some of them can be rounder than others. We'll do that one. Okay, that's going to be it for there. We come all the way up here. Now we're definitely going to need some support up here. Get out of there. So we'll do three here. Uh, that was on another one. There we go. We'll do three there. We'll do three here and here. Good enough. And then we'll come up here. We'll need some. And I think for this one, I'll just drag an edge loop up and then we'll do both of these period key if you want to focus on it do those I'll do one I'll do three there I could have done just one I can just bring one out that's probably gonna be just fine uh, we'll do this one we're gonna to need to do it under here so I'll do three there and we're gonna grab these two do three we'll do three here and that should be all we need. We should be able to shade smooth. Uh, the only thing is I want to look at this. Maybe I'll get rid of this one. And just have it. Uh, in fact, let's see. What if I get rid of that one as well? How's it going to look? I think that's going to look just fine. Um, let's come down here and choose maybe this edge 
here, control B, pull just with two, just like that. E and Alt S and pull that in a little and then bevel the edges with three. There's two, three. And that gives me that. And if I really wanted to, I probably want to put a subdivision on. I think it would look just a little bit better. And I'm going to get rid of this now. You know, that's not, not bad as it is. And uh, that's got one subdivision, and that is applied. I'm going to apply that subdivision, and I'm going to join those. And to die, you'll never see underneath there. And we have our fancy lamp. Now, in terms of in terms of statistics, it is relatively high, um, but uh, you know to get that smooth look, that's pretty much what we're going to need. All right, so I will use something like this. We'll texture that next, and then we're going to try to bring that into a scene with the wall light. I think a a bit of a destroyed, dilapidated wall in behind it to get a little the Last of Us scene. All right, so uh, I'll have the reference image for you to download if you'd like to, and we'll see you in the next video.